So what I want to do is, I noticed that the last speaker talked a little bit on the tack theory. Some of you may have done that. I always recommend that when you're learning, and we're all learning something every day, right? So, and, and, and that goes for me. It's not a prideful thing. We learn something every day. We learn a lot more here than normal because we're around our, our brothers and sisters in the industry, right? But when we're going to look at this stuff and you learn something every day, it has a lot of value. You never know where the value is going to be, do you? So what I want to do, the gentleman that was here before, I don't know him, but he knows what I don't know, right? He knows some things. So it's really good if you get a lot of opinions from different trainers on the same subject material because you get a more well-rounded education. Especially when it's free like this, it's great, right? All right. All right, so what I want to do is go over the TAC theory. The TAC theory is time, temperature, agitation, and chemical. It was invented by um, a brother in history we lost about 13 years ago, Carl Williams. Carl Williams wrote 32 textbooks in the industry. He was the all-time textbook writer. I figure I'm going to finish about 22, way short, but I was Carl's protege because I sat in a fabric cleaning class and he asked around, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to become an instructor. And he looks at me with his rim glasses down like this. And he was a big tough guy. And he said, see me after class. And I had to buy him a monster steak dinner to get a job. But he invented the tax theory. It's actually his writing. So it's kind of fun to sit up here and talk about it. Good. Well, one of the things I want to show you on the handout before I went into the TAC theory was the absorbency rate. I've never seen, you know, when you go and you make your own path in life, don't you? You want to do better than your mom and dad or your grandparents. You want to be successful. And better than that, you want your kids successful, right? So I have never seen anybody do research on what, how much moisture or cleaning solution each fiber absorbs. That has a lot to do with everything, right? The number one thing you ever learn when you go to clean anything is what are the characteristics of that stone, the fabric, right, the carpet fiber, so you know what they'll take, what screws them up, and what makes them better, right? Then we learn how to fiber ID them, no matter what they are. Even if it's stone, we can tell one from another, right? Because they all have characteristics also known as personalities. What, what does that personality want? What will wool that is? Why is this wool? This is wool because wool hides soil. It's also naturally flame resistant. So the insurance companies make them put this in in common areas. It's an insurance, okay? So everything has a purpose. So this is how much moisture that they, it's in your uh, holdout, your handout. But if you look at that, that's actually how much it absorbs. And, and you explain that to your customer and you're cleaning fabric and she's giving you real fabric and she wants it dry in 10 minutes, it probably ain't gonna happen. Especially as soil as you and I get stuff, right? We get, we get the let's fix it stuff, right? So if you've got a 30% absorbency rate, it's twice as absorbent as cotton. Look at the value of that number. So that gives you something very good to build on with a customer. She had a shower that morning, and I hope you did too, right? Right? And you wiped it off with a polyester microfiber towel. Are you kidding me? You used a towel, right? With cotton. So it gives you something to relate to and what kind of things probably should be sprayed with protectant from nylon up, right? And if Scotch Guard, you different products, it shows you how easy they stain from the normal things in food and drinks. That gives you a number. It gives you something to work with, doesn't it? Because you didn't put that number up there. Nature put that number. A man put that number there, right? It's kind of valuable information. So I want to I want to throw that in as a freebie. I thought I had some value for you. Good? I haven't seen any paper airplanes out of my work yet. This is good. All right. So yesterday, if you, some of you were here, we talked about wet versus dry cleaning. Wet versus dry cleaning. Dry cleaning is a dry solvent. Water is a wet process. Okay. So the tack theory is actually quite simple. And we're going to start on page three of the handout. The tack theory is temperature, sometimes known as heat, agitation, chemical, and time. Some people like to spell it chat, like when you're talking, right? You just rearrange the word. The beauty of this system is absolutely beyond I can describe if you're a cleaner, because this tells you if it's coming clean, 
it tells you what it needs to come clean. It tells you what you're missing if it's not coming clean enough, even down to the stain removal, the agitation. Maybe your chemistry's right. Maybe you're doing it beautifully. The chemistry isn't just right. I had a student in Baltimore, I'll never forget him, young man, about early 20s, went on his own, and he called me up, he said, I remember that pack here, I went and cleaned a sofa, a white sofa, he's in New York area, he said I could not get it clean, I was there for an hour and a half trying to get the cushions clean, and he said, it dawned on me, it thought that Mark, you had said to me, the agitation's what's most needed if it's missing, and it's the most underrated of all these, that's my opinion. I can prove that to you, it'd be kind of fun to help you remember it. But he said, Mark, I just took a towel because I didn't have a brush. I wet the towel and the stuff came right off after an hour and a half and the customer was ecstatic. He said, Mark, you made my life. I'm not bragging about me, but one thing in a life like this can really help you, right? Because we're about helping each other and learning, right? It's not about my, my personality or anything. So I will tell you in opinion, I can show you this, that agitation is probably the most un underrated and temperature is sometimes the most overrated. Am I a big fan of using um, heat on cleaning fabric? Oh yeah, I love heat like the next person, right? Sometimes the more the better, right? But I want to show you when you got to be careful with heat. Okay, so time, temperature, agitation, and chemical. If one of these isn't getting enough or you're missing it, you're going to have to use more of the three. That's the golden rule. So if you can't use, many of us are using portables, right? They don't have heat or there isn't enough heat that you can get out of your truck mount, right? A lot of you guys are doing and using truck mount tools and you have the heat if you spray it in the bucket for 10 minutes and then you hit the fabric, right? You know it's going to be cold for a while, right? So sometimes you want to clean the outside and work your way to the soil there because then, but you have to keep that tool moving, don't you? Because it's not going to retain the heat. So this sometimes becomes a lot less of a factor than you'd like it to have. If there isn't temperature that you'd like to get, how much pressure does it put on this? It puts a lot because that has to be nearly perfect, doesn't it? What assists the chemical? Time does by allowing the chemical to work properly, right? We call that in real time. We're going to go over these. And agitation speeds up the chemical process. It, it actually works well with it. It's sort of its best buddy because that solves a great deal of problem. How many of you guys have a white cleaning truck? Most of us, right? Okay, so you went to a car wash, right? And you had all kinds of options. It's Saturday, you get to clean your truck. Isn't that the best thing you can do on Saturday, clean your wash your truck? Get a life, right? So you take a garden hose, or you can even wipe it off with a dust cloth. That's like vacuuming, right? And then you take and you put a garden hose to it. You haven't done anything, just put a garden hose. How much garbage do you see fly off that truck? Quite a bit, right? Now you get an area, now it's drip dry, and you go to the field, can you see that film? You can picture the film, it's still on there, right? So then you spray it with a shampoo or a cleaning product, with a pump sprayer. A lot of us can use cleaning products on our, our vans, it's not too strong. You put that on there, and then you rinse it. Is it gonna come cleaner? Well, then when you let that dry, you know there's a film because if you just wiped it with a brush, it all would have come off. You know that. So that's why I'm saying that's needed. But we don't want to pressure the, we don't want to use a strong jet and pressurize it, right? So we want to use something that these blend in beautifully. You want to have a beautiful blend of each one of these so that if you're not having this, we need to put the pressure here. You, you know that there's a piece missing because you have to figure that out. If your chemical is too weak because you're afraid to damage the fabric, you're going to have to do that. And if the fabric is delicate, you won't be able to use a lot of that. It's going to depend on this. As a certification school owner and an instructor, I do a lot of museum pieces. I did things that were two and three hundred years old. So I get all the crazy stuff. But the everyday thing, that most of it's polyester, you can use as much of these as you want, which is good news, right? Which means we're, we're actually underselling it. So the first one is temperature. There was a scientist in the 1890s, and he was from Sweden called Arenas. And Arenas said, he nailed it. For a guy that many years ago, he nailed it. Because think of the technology, right? He said for every 18 degrees that you start going from 118, and this is on page three in the bottom. And we're looking at 
So if you started, I don't know how we came up with these numbers, but the good news is we don't have to know, right? Right? There's always enough chemistry to be really good, but not have to go to chemistry school. I love that kind of stuff, right? Make me look good to the customer, right? But don't make me explain it. There we go. So I get it. So if you started at 118, that's a base temperature reset. Now if you're cleaning at 118 and your spas are about 108, 109, that's pretty warm. But warm water cleans better than cold right, right, normally, right? So if you add 18 degrees to 118, you get 136. Your molecular activity in your chemistry is going to double every 18 degrees over 118. That's why we use heat. We're not saying we can every time, and I'll show you when not to, but that's what Arrhenius' law was from 1890s. By the way, he's the same guy who came up with that stupid pH scale we got to know. I didn't realize that. I learned that about a year ago. I did some research on this guy. So at 118, 18 degrees over 118, you get 136, then 154, then 172, and it goes all the way up to 250, and it levels off. It doesn't get any different. Would we like to clean it 200 degrees if we can safely? Oh, you bet. The fabric would dry faster, right? The, the, every, the soils would melt real well. That's when you have great temperature. Does that take pressure off the, the chemistry? It takes pressure off the what? The dwell time, less dwell time, and it takes um, a faster dry time overall. So we like heat. So, so we're going to double the cleaning's efficiency. Now, you have two key questions I want you to know as a cleaner, as a good consumer. Cleaners, I'm a consumer like you. Be a good consumer. I'm, I'm telling you as my friends in the industry, be a good consumer, okay? Key question, when you buy a product for fabric, whether you like it or not, is that product designed for the kind of heat you want to use? Ten years ago, I came here to Las Vegas. I traveled on my own time and gas to make a one-hour talk. And in the back of the room were two people, very good friends of mine. In fact, one's an instructor I just hired. And they work for chemical companies. You know I won't say. Fair enough? And I said, here's a product, okay? Didn't use theirs. I used another brand. I hit I the label. I said, okay, I'm going to get this hot through my extractor, okay? Or truck mount, right? Okay. How hot can I get this chemical before the chemical is no longer effective or lessens it? Why is it in the bottle? Come on. Go like this. Why is it on the bottle? So if you have a chemical you're going to run through there and it says, okay, it's good up to 200 degrees and you're running it at 210, what's going on with the chemical you paid for? I'm trying to make you good consumers. I asked both of them, why is it on your labels? They're good, they're longtime friends of mine. And they looked at each other like, you know, you, mark, you know Mark the Consumer Advocate? You know, all I ever hear is we made a lot of bottles already. Good, well that was 10 years ago. I'm still waiting for the answers to that question. So when you guys run the heat up, make sure the chemical is designed. Call them on the 800 number. Call, I don't care if you call them, collect. Get, get a little chemistry and make sure that, that they know, they know they built the product. It's good, it's good uh, consumer protection. Let them tell you how much you can run that at. Because if that heater is very hot at the machine and it's cooled off, you're cleaning with that's exposed before it gets to the other end, right? It's already got it. What if you lose 20% of strength and you pay for 100%? Be a good consumer. Find out. Is that good? You owe me. I'll buy you dinner tonight. Get a free dinner here. Okay? So it should be stated on the container or at least make it available to us, right? Be a good consumer. Come on, guys. Okay? So this goes up from 118 up and levels off at 250. We don't have 250 yet. Why don't we clean with 250? Because all the water lines will burst. They're not designed for that. And they'll rot so much faster. And, and there. But it'd be great to have that, wouldn't it? The technology is there, we just can't apply it because we can't get the hose manufacturers to guarantee anything. I've had water lines blow up on me and you can't believe how hot water is when you're that close to it. All right, advantages with heat. Cautions with heat, okay? Not for silk. Don't ever heat up silk. I, hey, I'm one of those guys that I'll nuke it if I can because, because you know, if you know what you're doing, it's good, right? I'm just, I'm trying to help you so heat. 
How many of you guys know what rayon viscose is? The rugs from uh, double, is a H-E double hockey stick, right? Viscose? What is viscose? It's regenerated wood pulp with man's chemicals in it, with a little cotton thrown in. That's why it's nice and soft. It's the most evil thing they ever came up with. Most of it's coming from countries way out of here. I'm not supposed to mention who they are, right? You seen those viscose area rugs? They scroll with your wand. You use your beater bar and you'll scratch it. Very sad. Viscose loses up to 70% of its strength while it's wet. Cotton gains 50%. Well, who would you rather clean? You get a lot of these $2,000 rugs every day. Silk, no heat, no heat. Now, if the fabric's been printed, you ever see where they print them? You ever open up a fabric, it's colored on one side? It's printed like a newspaper through a computer. I wouldn't put heat on that. You'll take the color off, most likely. And anything containing a natural fiber, be very careful with heat. How hot can you get wool? What's wool safe say? Anybody know? 160 degrees. Is that good? We don't want to turn the heat down. We, want, we can get it up, right? It works the reverse, right? Why cheat yourself, right? Our job is to maximize. Time is money. We work way too hard, don't we? We're underpaid, we're underrespected, and doggone, we got to fix that, right? Vote for me. <laughs> okay? So, painted fabrics. You ever seen a painted? They're very rare. You can tell because if you ever feel a design and it feels scratchy, it's dried paint. So if you put dry cleaning solvent on, you'll probably take the paint off. They're very rare. Uh, and any never, ne never anything on a type of leather, okay? How many people know the pH scale? How many people won't raise their hand? How many people are just waiting for the free dinner? You're on tape right now, it's good. I tell you what's wrong with this scale. They've had 130 years to fix the symbols. I have a fellow Irish RC instructor who stayed at my house years ago, and I made a mistake, he teaches chemistry. I made the mistake of asking him, how come the scale goes from zero to 14? Why, since we count, with, when do we start counting at zero, don't we? So why we have seven instead of zero? Why doesn't the scale go zero, one, two, three, four? Zero, negative one, negative two. And I got a two hour lecture of chemistry I did not want in my own house. Try to get away from somebody in your own house. I even went to the restroom, told him I had to take a shower. He's behind the door banging, giving me lessons. Like one of those Trekkie guys, you get them going and they don't, you know. So I can't figure out why they did that, but it makes it very difficult to explain it to people who are in an industry and they never had a chemistry set or a chemistry class. I didn't either. There are more fun things to do in high school than chemistry for me, and I've suffered ever since. So seven is zero, right? Seven is equal parts acid and alkaline, right? So as we go from seven to 14, every number is 10 times the aggressive of the previous. So this is eight, and seven is equal parts acid and alkaline. That's called pH balance, like when they do your hair. So if you have somebody says, I'm gonna use a pH balance in shampoo, chances are your hair won't turn out looking like mine. It used to be brown, okay? But if you go from 7A to alkaline, it's 10 times the chemical activity of a 7. This is 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million, 10 million. So what, does one point make a difference? So where do we clean in fabric? Anywhere we can. Isn't that good news? I put in, the, I put in there, let's go over to page 4 on the middle. And on the chemistry side, on the chemistry side, we want to preferably say somewhere between about five and nine. Here's the deal. When you're doing silk and you're doing anything with stone, remember they're both with an S. It's easy to remember, silk and stone. Those are the two items we clean every day that absolutely hate acid. So if it's silk or stone. There's a lot of things that aren't silk and stone. That's good news. On those, you've got to stay neutral or on the alkaline side. Silk doesn't mind somewhere in here. 
but stone likes it alkaline. That's a natural environment. It does not like that. That's why when you're polishing stone, they're using acids. They're trying to set off and piss off the stone and make it beautiful, which is great money, right? So the pH scale matters to us. Give you a quick example. That's battery acid. Is that strong? That's limes. They're very acidic. That's vinegar and lemons. That's coffee. Did you know that fresh urine is a four on an animal, but dries it at 12? Did you guys know that? That's why you're having so many problems. If they don't treat this with an acid why it's fresh, or even a little vinegar, as you know they used to say vinegar, that leaves it on the acetic side. Except for silk, it'll almost never stain if they treat it on the acetic side, almost no matter what the fabric or whatever the carpet yard. That's why we have to be paramedics at times, don't we? We have to be paramedics to tell people how to end issues before we get there so they don't make them worse, right? You and I know sometimes they've gone through a chemistry set and now they call you, right? I'm the only one? Okay. I, I, I love, I get 35% of my working day is rescuing consumers and cleaners. And I love them, they're my brothers and my sisters, but I feel bad for them because I've been there. So the, the rinses that we use are somewhere between about five and a half and six. You've seen those fiber rinses because they're designed to rinse out any alkaline, but they leave the fiber more stripped. You never want to rinse the fiber out, the fabric out with water. The only thing in the entire industry you normally use just water on to rinse is stone. Because everything else is really ideal to neutralize floor strippers and anything else that we're using with the alkaline and leave it slightly right around the middle. Because if you don't do that, I know a lot of cleaners that rinse out fabric with, with water, hot water, after they shampoo or do things, and they're just asking for it. That's how water rings form. Because even if the water is pure, you're going to have issues. And nobody uses pure water, even those systems. And I, I think that's the tears because they're asking for it. The alkaline side here is really good. Most of the safe area for fabrics right in here. Right about eight to eight and a half is usually the most best, better area. When you're trying to get heavy oils and things out, we sometimes will lean over in here, but we want to make sure we neutralize and rinse it well. Won't have much of an issue. Any questions on that? I can make up so I look smart while they're videotaping me. Yeah, I'm kind of down to earth. All right. So the natural fibers, um, pH is right about between three and about eight. That's usually about the general range that we'll clean, about from three to eight. The synthetic is usually from about two till about nine. Now, I do want to tell you something, because, you know, if you're now starting to look at what the pHs are, I was, and I say this very, very cautiously and very respectfully, I pushed this industry terribly to put the pHs on the bottles. They weren't doing it. Bridgepoint was the first, and they started, thank, when one did, they all kind of fought, which is good, right? But don't ever buy a bottle by the pH. Buy the bottle by its contents because the pHs can be misleading. There's a lot of good cleaners I ate out there that are all clean a 10. Okay. Now, I want to show you something just while we're on the schedule that's not in the book or in the handout. Natural fibers, you don't want to go stronger than 2. If you go stronger than 2, it'll etch the yarn, especially cotton. How popular is cotton? It'll etch it. It actually can etch it and turn it black. And that's the result. You'll see it turn black almost on contact and you won't fix it. You get something very acetic, that strong of acetic between one and even zero, you'll see it almost instantly. It's a rare occurrence, but you can't afford it. You want to stay at two or higher. Because you may be getting rust from a button area. You might be getting some extreme thing that you really want to dig in with some strong acid to remove. But be very careful getting too strong. One thing that we don't do with chemistry is we don't give it enough dwell time. We want to make those chemicals work for us. It's like a lazy employee. Don't buy the dumb thing and work for it. You, it should work for you. And one of the things I love about these shows, the manufacturers show up, and we get a chance to tell them what we think and how happy and upset we are because we have a right to tell them. We want to be respectful and give them some feedback. They're just sitting around, right? I lost all my manufacturing friends, but gained a good crowd. Except plain right there, right? Yeah. 
Okay. Agitation. Agitation is when they call you to work on a Saturday that's your day off. Is that agitation? How about Sunday morning when they want you to drop everything and you're asleep and they just spilled a, a gallon of red wine out of the refrigerator on the kitchen carpet? Is that agitation? Now, agitation is when we're going to agitate after the pretreatment, which could be anything, right? We're using, mostly using water-soluble pre-sprays. They're basically very safe versions of traffic lane cleaner. Did you know that? Did you guys know that? Yeah, the pHs tend to be much gentler. I made up this from, because I've been shooting a lot of, this fabric pre-spray generically is an 8.5. It's pretty safe. You can use that on almost anything. But we want to put down enough, of course, that it covers it, right? So if you put down an agitation, you want to use the right kind of brush, right? Many of you don't know these things exist because there's a lot of suppliers that don't carry these things because they don't sell, which is sad. So how do you know how strong? Do you want to prove your manhood by scrubbing it? Probably not a good idea. This is Tampico. If you want, I'll pass this out. Tampico is a natural fiber. This is more aggressive than a, than a horse hair, but it's generally considered one of the most ideal mid-range fibers to scrub with. Can I see it? Can I, can I pass it around? He passed Little League. This is horse hair. This is horse hair. This is the most common. Okay. Oh, yeah, horse hair. I want to, yeah. Oh, it's not a free sample day. When you guys go to agitate something, you put the pre-spray down, a real good secret is to spray the brush head. Because not only will it spread it, it takes a lot of the pull off the fabric. And it glides, and you'll spread it in areas you would have had to spray. Ready? OK. How strong do you think this one is? What would you use this on? Takes off your acne. Did you, by the way, you guys know what this is? This is actually a bone scraper. Did you guys know that? It's a two-way tool. Many of you don't know it's a bone scraper. Right here. Done it for years. This is probably the most aggressive brush you could ever use on a fabric, and I would only use it on outdoor furniture. What is this? What, what is this? Yeah, it's a tamping brush. This makes, you can use this on outdoor furniture. It's actually quite convenient, but be very careful. It's designed, when you've gone down there, you're going to put a spot down and you want to tamp it on, on the actual towel to remove something. It's very, very effective on ink, okay? Count those, there's four brushes. What is this? What type of brush is this? Huh? Hair. Is it good? <laughs> it's got bald hair. So I showed this to the class yesterday. When we have, we're not going to use this tool. I'm going to show you this tool for batteries. But when you're using the hair, a lot of us, including me, for years did this. Did you know it's better if you turn it sideways? It actually pulled the hair out of the yarn, out of the weave. Use it sideways. By the way, that tamping brush works real well, too. I'd rather have to pull the hair out of this than pull the hair out of this. You can actually use it sideways. Because a lot of the times the hair gets embedded in the weave and you can pull it out by doing it sideways. Where if you agitate it, it just sits there looking at you. Because hair is a pain in the behind, isn't it? To get out. Very big. Good? What's this? Grooming tool is a velvet grooming tool. This is for pile weaves. When I teach the, the, the upholstery certification and the basic skills, I have tubs worth of designer fabrics. Because I'd rather spend time that than any, because you can nuke the rest of the stuff. I really want you to go deep into stuff. But you gotta have these, because if you don't groom those things, I always go into a home and I know a cleaner's been there because he goes up and down and leaves it up and down. And it dries permanently. I walk right in and I just met the customer. Oh, you had your fabric cleaned, huh? comes right out of her mouth. Not one of you guys, right? What is this? It's a carding brush. This is designed to straighten out an app. This is uh, microfiber. What's microfiber made out of? It's always made out of one yarn and nothing else. It's 
It's called the, the, the sometimes it's known as the fun fabric because it's Polly and Esther, two girls' names. Maybe you've heard of it. Esther and Polly. It's not my joke. But microfiber is polyester. What happens when you clean polyester? All the water sits on top. It feels like you soaked it. You come back an hour later and it's dry and you can't figure out why? Well, it's absorbing less than 1% of the moisture. Where's the water supposed to go? You look like a genius. Can you agitate this pretty strongly? Yep. Okay. What are these? This is one of those things nobody uses. What are these? They look like the lollipop man. Or a cricket going up a wall, one of the two. These are actually fabric mix. These are for fabric. Like when you wax a car, they actually sell these wax cars, but they're in our industry, and you could actually, if you like using your hands that much rather than brush, you can. If it's a delicate fiber, I don't suggest that you use it with the strip. But these are hardly ever used. They're a great tool. And you can wax your car with them on the weekend. Just get all that wax off. Okay? All right. A little bit more? So what is our relationship with time? How long should a product sit before we start cleaning once we pre-spray? What's the industry average? 15 or 20 minutes. How much time do we give it? Gee, I wonder why it's not working. Okay, I will tell you something. When you put a pre-spray down, a lot of you haven't. I talk a lot of classes. I can't believe our industry still doesn't know this, and I mean it because I care about you, okay? I've had cleaners come in for 20 years, and they don't know these products are out there. It's not a product brand, it's a type. Did you guys know, how many of you know about a traffic lane booster? Just one, two of you? Do they help? Go like this. Okay, what, what's a traffic lane booster also known as, generically? No, it's known as a blended solvent. Oh, you're gonna love me for this. How many people do outdoor furniture? Okay, you got it, you gotta have this. Blended solvents come by the gallon. Let's make up a sample because we're almost done. If that's a blended solvent, there's about at least six companies who make It's a blend of petroleum and water-based solvents in one container. And they're usually about $60 for a gallon. So don't be shocked by the price. It's a very pricey to make this. The blessing is the water solvents and the oil blend together. It's a booster. You can also use it for ink and other things straight. Remember, we're talking generics in the brand. If you have a pre-spray of 9.5 or 8 and you want to be gentle, you can put a little bit in there. And by the way, you don't glug this stuff because you're using, an, you're using one ounce per mixed gallon. That's how far it goes. You put a quarter ounce in a spray bottle with your pre-spray when you have a really oily piece of fabric and it dissolves the oil almost in front of your eyes. And when you go to put some on the brush, remember the mixture together, do more than about maybe a quarter ounce. That little bit is enormous. How many of you guys have POG, paint over grease remover? You can use the same thing. The reason the blended solvents are better, it's a different types of solvents that attack different types of oils. So you have a nice wide spectrum of things attacking your problem rather than one type. You're throwing the whole army at it. The guns, the, the Marines, the army, the whole thing at that problem. And you'll see it disappear in minutes. It's phenomenal. And many of you don't use You can use them on fabric. Don't ever use them on extraction. You'll have so much film in that yarn, you'll never get it off. Okay? Good? Okay, I think a couple last things. You guys got my information? If you don't have it in the handout, write that in your, in your heads or put that on your phone. You're always welcome to call me. I'm in Southern California. And I... Uh, I'm up early, but the best time to get me is sometime during the day, and I'll usually call you back. I get cleaners that call me in the middle of jobs, and I get that. You know, I, I've been there. So I want to make sure I can take care of you. It's good having friends in the industry. It's good from learning from each other, right? Without the attitude. I learn something every day. I'm no different. If you want to take a look at the books, I've got all kinds of stuff coming out, including custodial. I've just finished a custodial basics course. It's never been done before. I want to find the stuff that we need that no one else is doing and addressing because I think that has some value to the person that you're trying to teach, right? You guys take a look if you want. I love having you. I'm going to hang around for a little bit.